Well, hello, and welcome back to another fine, fine, scary episode of Ghost Stories Told from the South. I am your host, Stephen LaBooth, and I got some scary, scary stuff for you today, boys and girls. <laughs> well, guys, sorry I didn't do an episode last week. I've been sick as a mother lover. You know what sucks is, with me being the only one that does this recording it, editing it, and everything, research, when I'm sick and I'm down, the whole damn thing shuts down, so I'm sorry for that. I'm feeling a whole lot better now. Still got some I hack a little bit, still hacking stuff up, so I might have to mute my mic sometime and hack a lung up, but I'm a lot better. Thank you, guys. I didn't go anywhere, but this is episode 199. What I'm going to do, put this one on air tonight, Friday night. And this weekend, I'll get up in the morning. And, um. <laughs> oh, gosh, sorry. My uh, daughter's in the, uh, in her room. And her cat's a male cat. And he's, uh, I don't know what his problem is here lately. But he's, uh, he ain't fixed yet. He ain't big enough yet. And he's, uh, sp he sprays sometimes. Yeah, but he's a good cat besides that. We just got to get him fixed. But if you hear any background noise, that's my daughter in her room playing the VR. But yeah, I'm feeling better. Everything's back to norm. <coughs> <coughs> so other than just having a stupid ass hack, I'm feeling great. <coughs> <coughs> oh, but. Like I said, I hope you guys are doing good. I want to say thank you for the numbers. They're going good. YouTube channel's doing great. Go check out uh, me on Facebook, too. Ghost Stories Told from the South. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry. I'll do okay till I start talking. My throat's still flimmy. And I've been a smoker for about 20-something years, and I've uh, not had a cigarette in like a month now, I believe, over a month. Not two months. Yeah, and I'm hacking shit up left and right, so. <coughs> Pardon me. I don't mean to sound gross. But anyways, enough about me. I hope you guys are good and girls are good, and I uh, hope everything's fine like wine with you. But we're going to get on with some stories. But like I said, I'm going to do this episode tonight because it's my makeup episode. And this weekend, I'll probably put one on, put the uh, new one on Sunday night. So I'm going to work on it all weekend. It's going to be my 200th episode. <coughs> <coughs> so what I'm probably going to do is um, do something special. I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm, I'm going to think about it tonight and uh, do that for like a, uh, a, a I'm going to do two shows. I'm going to do the 200th show, but I'm going to cover something special for that one since it's the 200th episode. Um, then I'm going to do a, another episode, a special one, like a uh, montage of some of the different episodes just put in together through the years because, you know, that's Mark said. Uh, that's uh, next episode's uh, going to be 200th, 200th episode, and that's four years of recording, ladies and gents. I love it, and I thank you very much for it. And thank wherever you're listening to this, guys, just want to say thank you very much. And I have been hearing that Google Play is going away, so if you're listening to me on that platform, you have to find other places. But I'm on Spotify and um, Amazon. I iTunes, all them places, and then don't forget the YouTube channel, Ghost Stories Told from the South. But anyways, let me get another little drink and try to get this episode down here without hiking my lungs up. So, you know the routine. Get you a nice warm blankie. Go snuggle up next to the fire. Get a little warm. Poke it a little bit. Get you some nice hot coffee. <coughs> <coughs> or some tea. Whatever you prefer, my friend, and sit back and listen to some chillings, haunted places. All right, 
my first story is the Little Field House in Austin, Texas. Gong. There is something dark lurking in the Little Field House. From airy from airy sensations to disembodied foot to uh, to disembodied footsteps. This Victorian mansion, it's alive with the dead. Here's some facts. Built by George Littlefield in 1893, Littlefield locked his wife in the attic. Haunted by Alice Littlefield, and it's owned by the University of Texas in Austin, or at Austin. Ghostly happenings at the Littlefield House. Reports of paranormal activity at the Littlefield House have ran rampant for, near, for nearly a century. Sounds echo within the house. Invisible feet dart up and down the stairs. Strays, str strays streaks wake even the hardest of sleepers. What's haunting the Little Field House? The haunted legend of the Little Field House. The legend of the Little Field House begins with George and Alice Littlefield, a loving couple who are uh, a loving couple who were sadly adored throughout Austin. Oh, they were uh, oh yeah, they were adored through Austin. No one knew George had a secret. Unable to have children of their own, George and Alice donated on okay. Donated on their twelfth on their twelfth nephews and seventeen nieces. When George built the mansion, he intended to house as many children as he could. He and Alice even paid for all 29 college ed educations at the uh, University of Texas. Who could say that George and Alice were adored by their family members? They did not know that each time George went on an errand or a trip, he locked his wife in the attic. He feared that the Yankees might swarm in and kidnap her, leading him to bolt the attic door after or door with Alice inside. That's messed up. As you expect, Alice began to experience fits of hysteria. She lived in terror that she might be stolen away from George. Or worse, brutally murdered. On one, on on one, uh, on more than one occasion, Alice could be seen hurrying down the stairs. Her horrific screams could be heard, echoing throughout the mansion. George had George had little idea about what to do with his wife. He brought her to one doctor after another, until one advised him to take Alice to a sanatorium. George refused. Instead, he hired three nurses whose sole job was to comfort and care for his beloved Alice. As the legend goes, George Littlefield died of uh, pneumonia in 1920. While Alice remained heartbroken, her mental condition began to improve after some time. She regained her uh, her or she regained her zest for life in attended parties hosted by friends and family. When she died at the age of 88, Alice uh, bequeathed her home to the University of Texas, which means she gave it to the University of Texas. She was buried in the University of Austin's Oakwood Cemetery, 
are the Austins Oakwood Cemetery. <laughs> Beside her beloved husband. Yeah, her beloved husband who locked her in the attic. A lot of sources suggest that Alice may have experienced some sort of mental illness towards the latter part of her life. But just as many sources argue the opposite. In one interview with George and Alice, with George and Alice's great uh, nephew, David Gracie, he told the Daily Texan that the rumors have no truth to them, whatever. Oh, now I can see better. I had to turn the light on. Where was I at? Okay, no truth to them whatsoever. Alice, he said, was never locked in the attic, especially not at the hands of her husband. As Grace reported, there is no, ba there is no basis for that rumor, and it trashes the character of, his, of those people, not to mention that they did not that they did so much for the university i think local historian jim nakare said the uh, same politician because it's the only house on campus and it is the uh, oldest campus campus myths are contagious and prolific on many campuses Regardless, Alice Alice's poltergeist is said to be is said to prowl the property. the The phantom, uh, the phantom piano player, the most common paranormal phenomenon known to occur at the Littlefield House, is the haunting sounds of the piano playing upstairs. As Alice Littlefield was the only one who played it most frequently during life, it makes sense that her spirit continues doing so in the afterlife. So she still plays the piano there. Now that would creep me out. Even though I knew knew it'd be her, I'd still it'd still creep uh, creep me out. Okay, then in June of 1842, George Littlefield was born in. Okay, is it going to go back this far? I don't give a crap, really. I care more about the house and all that. Not about where this guy was born. Let's see if there's any more about the ghost. Well, and I think that's it, because it really just talks about him. But... The University of Texas owns the place, and no one's ever really um, got to explore this place because of uh, it's owned by the University of Texas. So there's no tours or anything, but yeah, they own that house. Pretty, You can go see pictures of it and stuff, but I don't think you can do tours or anything. But I might be wrong, you never know, but I hope you enjoyed that one. And the next one is, all right, the next one is the DeSoto Hotel. With more than 100 years of, of history in one of, in one of Texas' most haunted, most haunted towns, the DeSoto Hotel has a reputation, has a reputation as a paranormal hot, hot spot. If you're a if you're ghost hunting in El Paso, make sure that is that DeSoto is on your list. As a simp as simple fact of business, people come and go in hotels all the time. Many of these people are simply passing through in town on business or a vacation without putting much uh, thought to where they may they're sleeping. Others, though, tend to approach hotels when they're redone on their luck and facing the worst uh, times of their lives. It's guests like these that lead to 
Oh, it's guests like this that lead to leave an impression impression on a place, leaving something behind that never uh, quite leaves. A psychic import, imprint, perhaps, or something even more in certain dark cases. What truly resides within the uh, coffins of the old Paso's de Soto's Hotel is up for much debate in the subject of a great mystery. Some say these spirits are harmless, while others state they are something far darker. The History of the Hotel A Hundred Years and Three Ghosts Though it has been in operation in, in El Paso for more than a hundred years, the DeSoto Hotel, the DeSoto Hotel's history is mostly quiet, is a mostly quiet one. Since its construction, it has operated as a hotel and a long-term affordable residential location for uh, for retirees and has remained a landmark of El Paso's history in, in time. Unassuming, even kind of a beautiful in a stark, like early 20th century fashion, its extension would not hold, a, hold your attention for more than a passing moment on, a, on average. Okay, the ghost of the DeSoto Hotel. Did I say that right or do it right? Okay, I started there. And then the last thing I said. Okay, yeah. I'm on the right path. Okay, the ghost of the DeSoto Hotel. The building has a long or the building has had a long report history of being haunted and has been and has been the site of many paranormal, paranormal investigations. El Paso's locals locals speaks in hushed tones of the hotel's haunting history, and many say you you get a strange feeling just by looking at it. Others say that if you walk through the hallways with a partner. It is not uncommon to feel the strange sensation of someone passing between you, even if you're the only ones around. <laughs> uh, okay. Though it isn't possible to say for sure how many spirits and specters roam the uh, halls of the hotel. There are three distinct entities that have been documented by more than one source. The shadow in the doorway. One of the one of the more notable entities expressed at the DeSoto Hotel is all the more com complying for having actually shown on video. Investigators looking more Oh, looking into the DeSoto set up cameras and audio recording equipment in one of the hotel's abandoned hallways and came away with some interesting and some, some would say creepy evidence. In the footage, they recorded a strange voice, excuse me, that can be heard saying, Who can? While the EVP collected its unset, uh, unsetting enough on its own. Not long after the image of a faded ethere ethereal person walking across the hallway can be seen and can be seen can be seen. Is this evidence of a paranormal entity taking up residence in the DeSoto Hotel perhaps? <coughs> <coughs> Sorry. Excuse me. But, at the very least, it's 
It is an interesting and upsetting clip. Sarah, another noteworthy spirit that supposedly haunts the hotel's corridors, is that of a young girl that has came to be known as Sarah. A rather playful spirit, Sarah can be reported, reportedly be found wandering the DeSoto, DeSoto's many halls. She can be heard laughing and giggling. And when prompt in the uh, past has been caught in caught and caught on camera or caught on audio saying her name. Oh, sneaky girl. Unlike some of the DeSoto reported spirits, Sarah is said to be more mischievous than mal than uh, violent. She likes to play around and has been said to particularly been drawn towards women who pass through the hotel. Should you have an encounter with Sarah, don't be afraid, as she might offer you a truly warm welcome to the DeSoto Hotel. The thing in the basement. Why is there always something in basements, whether it's a business, a hotel, a home? I mean... Basements are useful, but God, they're fucking scary. Why? All right. The thing in the basement. If Sarah, if Sarah's one of the more welcoming spirits of the DeSoto, of the DeSoto has to offer, the darkness that resides within the basement would have to be the exact, exact, exact opposite there are stories and theories around oh theories abound to explain the true true nature of the dark entity that hides within the dark confidence of the basement some say that it is a restless spirit that does not know how to control its anger while others speculate that it might be something truly dom uh, demonic. Whatever its origins and in and intends intentions are, there's no denying the violence that thing is capable of. Locals local tales no oh, local tales speak of a of a history of satanic worship arguing in the basement of the DeSoto. And while the satanic has historically been shown to be overblown, it may have some merit in its particular case. People passing through the basement of the DeSoto have reported tales of feeling watched and internally unwelcomely when inside. So that's a guy I don't like you in his basement, I take it. That would be that would be bad enough on its own. If it were not for this uh for this entity to attack people who gone into his domain. People who have wandered the basement have reported feelings of being pinched, hit, scratched, and even bitten by this unseen entity. Once they once they stepped out of the basement, the scratches have then proven to be proven proven to be all too real and too bloody. Recordings in the basement have taken uh, s a seemingly dark a seemingly dark turn, as unlike the far friendlier Sarah from the upper floors. The audio, audio of the thing in the basement has came off more like a demonic and truly unwelcoming growl. There were some who speculate as to whether or not it's truly a demon that resides in the DeSoto basement. But when you consider the most re, that most residents choose, choose to avoid this part of the hotel 
It's better to be safe than sorry. The DeSoto Legacy. Whatever the nature of these super, super, supernatural inhabitants of the DeSoto Hotel, it is undoubtedly a must-see location for any supernatural enthusiast when traveling through El Paso. So when you're passing through there, go check it out. The DeSoto Hotel. Go tell that demon in the basement you said hi. Go tell Sarah hi. Uh, I think I'd much rather tell Sarah hi than that demon ghost. All right. Get ready for our next one. All right. Our next story is the Old Pack Hotel. Oh, Old Park Hotel, I'm sorry. Old Park Hotel. Turn my light on just a little bit brighter. I wish it was a little bit brighter. Okay. The old dark ho the old dark huh <laughs> the old park hotel is is a historic building. That had multiple purposes during its lifetime. Built in 1886, it started as the Three Sisters Hotel and went on to function as, meet, as a meeting hall, restaurant, and schoolhouse, courthouse, apartments, and music store, cowboy lounge, a barlow, and an antique store. The hotel has 43 rooms and 10 square feet of space. The hotel has been more than one been more than one one owner has had more than one owner, but the uh Kill family I hate it when they do this. The Kill family has a permanent history with the building with it remaining in the family remaining in the uh, Kill family for multiple generations. When you visit and you should I gotta get a pointer okay. When you visit and you should you will see evidence of uh, of odd of add-ons to the building that occurred after the uh, that occurred over the years. Dan and Connie Love Faith the Faith purchased the old park hotel from Janet finally in 2016 and have since been lovingly restoring the building and returning it out for uh, paranormal investigators. The hotel is a two-story structure with 10 rooms available for overnight stays. The rooms are listed and described below per their purchase. Okay, well, I didn't do all that, so. All right, I guess here's some uh, ghost stuff that's happened. An upstairs room Named after former president or former resident Helen Kill, it has a adjusted balcony room that was once a gift shop. Okay, well, that's not anything about ghosts, you suckers. Uh, what are we talking about? Okay, here's some of the ghosts and some of the... Uh, and the experiences some of these uh, ghost hunters had. Cowboy, a.k.a. Uncle Sam, seen upstairs and encountered in the uh, pink room. A prostitute encount uh, encountered in LaFace Master's uh, suit. I guess these are ghosts that people have seen in these rooms. The Trees Ghost Sisters believed to be heard in the face master suit and the kitchen area. 
a little boy named Dennis or Benjamin. He has been seen running and playing in all of the rooms and the hallway. Glenn, a cowboy, also seen upstairs in or near the pink room. Other non-specific activities is feeling dizzy, headaches, apparitions in the uh, yellow room, in the Pruitt wildfire room, footsteps in the uh, downstairs hallway, women's voices in the kitchen area, a touch style lamp in the Preston's parlor turning on and off by itself, doors opening and closing on their own, and the feeling of being watched, being touched, cowboys feelings and voices in various parts of the hotel. Oh gross. Ah, <coughs> <coughs> oh, Samagalaka. Man, I'm so tired of coughing. All right, here's the uh, some of the experiences that people have have uh, has had there. We use the living room as a ba- as a base. Okay, this is an investigators. We use the living room as a base and and we br- and we brought a bunch of snacks mm, that we'll keep in the kitchen for our breaks. In the beginning of each of our visits, each team member will pick a room in which they stay overnight. I have stayed in the I have stayed in the Olender suit on each of uh, our visits and really like that suit. We have investigated the first floor, but we tend to spend most of our times on the second floor. Our team member reported a creepy feeling and having unexplained noises on their audio recorder near in La La Faith's uh, master suit. However, we were not able to get enough data to establish uh, that it was a voice. Other than that, there isn't much to report, report about, but just the first floor is the uh, busiest. Uh... Well, okay. I think that's it. All right, so if you're ever Ill, out in uh, Old Park Hotel, it's uh, here in Texas, go check it out. See what you see. You never know what you might find out there. All right, let me get a drink, and we'll do our last story of the day. All right, our next story is Old Town Springs, Texas. This town's down there around Houston. If you enjoy exploring haunted places in Texas or plan visiting Old Town Spring, this historic settlement near Houston dates to the 1700s when it was a winter camp for a local uh, in for the local Indian tribes before becoming a railroad hub in the early 20th century. Almost every building in town has a ghost story associated with it. Old Town, Old town Springs is an, early, is an early 1900s railroad town that eventually grew into the uh, Houston suburb of Springs. No one lives in Old Spring Town anymore, making it a modern-day ghost town. Today, the historic settlement is a uh, quiet, walkable shopping distance with over a hundred local businesses offering everything from artisans' baked goods to handcraft uh, crafts and uh, collectibles. As soon as the sun sets, however, the term ghost town takes on a much more literal meaning. (laughs) (coughs) 
I'm glad y'all love my sound effects. Where are we at, boys and girls? Where'd I go? Uh, as soon as it's okay. Almost every building in Old Springtown has a ghost story associated with it. And you can hear from them all. And maybe even have a paranormal encounter yourself. When you book with Houston Ghost Tours. Since 2008, Houston Ghost Tours has became, has been leading brave souls to the most infamous spots in, in town after dark. When you see something from an abandoned post office to a prohibition era saloon, listening to plenty of history, and folklore along the way. Hear about crusades, dolls, cold cases, murders, mysterious disappearances, and more terrifying tales. You'll even get the opportunity to trapeze through a cemetery, or tiptoe through a cemetery. Do you see the orb in the top right-hand corner of the photo? No, because I didn't show you one. The Wachese Brothers Cafe and Saloon dates to 1902. Opened by local brothers Charlie and Del Wanchi. It's the oldest building in Old, Old Town Springs. Restored to its former glory in uh, 2010 by the Kosh family. Upon stepping in, you will see many knobs or no nod many nods to the restaurant's excuse me wild history from antique light fixtures to a traditional saloon style bar and you'll see many old cowboy ghosts so if you're ever around there go check that place out it's an old ghost town so yeah I guess, you know, like I said, it was it kind of grew into Houston, so. But that's weird. No, no one really lives in the old part of the town. I wonder why. That is weird. Think about it. Think about it. Just think about it. Old Town Springs. So, look it up. Well, I'm sorry I was late on this one, guys. I was sick. But I'm back, and I'm going to work on the 200th episode that's whole weekend. So... Be looking forward to it. It'll be coming up Sunday evening. But it's going to be episode 200, guys. I'm excited. Can't wait to see you. We'll holler at you later. Be scary. Bye.